person a prophet they are killing the prophets they are committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still that we say that Allah should not put a seal on their hearts even after they committed so much big sins why so the thing is that if a person wants the guidance Allah will not put a seal on his, heart, on his heart but if the person is not deserving of the guidance he does not want the guidance he wants to live on his own he wants to live like a proud arrogant guy then let him be but if he wants to lower his head and submit himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it is his choice and this is better and this is why the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he used to make dua and this dua is in Hussein Muslim that oh Allah do not leave the affairs to me why because wallahi if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves the affairs everything to us for one second even we will not be able to live can you imagine in one second can you control the blood in your body can you control all the organs in your body can you control the hearing and the seeing and the visions and all these colors that you see how to transfer them how the eye should uh, read them in one second can you all do this in one second can you also control the food as well as the water can you also control the blood that is going to the arm as well as to the legs how will you able to control it wallahi we cannot so imagine in one second if allah leaves everything to it everything to us what a chaos will be in this world is this not a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why I'm saying read the principles before you come why that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second principle Allah does not Allah is not injustice to anyone Allah is not unjust to anyone and another point is that Allah is Ahkamul Hakimin, the most wise. The most wise. So it is not, uh, like you can say, it is not befitting that we say that Allah put it a seal on hearts without a reason. No. There is a reason. There is a shari reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it in. on his heart, the seal. Because he disbelieved. Because he rejected. Even if I reject, you reject, Allah will put a seal on our hearts. That is why we must make dua. Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala dinik. O oh, changer of the hearts, make my heart firm on your religion. Because we do not know when, when, when would Allah change our hearts. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts firm on this beautiful religion of Al Islam. Ameen. Point number 10. Is it permissible for a person to commit a sin and then say that it wasn't in my qadr? Then remember, this is haram. It is not allowed. Let us see the history of this. That how did this thing come into contact? Who was the first person to make this excuse? Does anyone know? The first person who made this excuse that it was in my qadr that I committed a sin. Who was it? Does anyone know? The first person in this whole universe. Hmm? Adam alayhi salam. Okay, any other answer? It can be anyone. Hmm? Sorry? The principal? What do you mean the principal? No, I'm saying who was the first person to make this excuse that it is in my qadr, that's why I committed a sin. Meaning Allah, you caused me to commit this sin. It was shaitan. Jazakallah wa barakallah fiqh. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 39. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, what is the shaitan iblis? Listen to what he says. Qala rabbi bima, subhanallah. He is saying, qala rabbi, oh my rabb. Even shaitan, devil, the Satan, he also knows there is a Rabb. And look at the people these days who deny that there is a Rabb. Subhanallah. See how clever Shaitan is. The one who knows there is a Rabb. The one who knows there is an Ilah. He is making people disbelieve that there is no Rabb. And he himself knows there is a Rabb. La ilaha illallah. He qala rabbi bima aghwaitani. No Allah, you made me astray. Shaitan is saying this. You made me astray. 
You are the one who made me astray. Now what did what 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 is Shaitan saying that okay you made me astray now what will I do? Listen to his response there. What will he do? He says La Uzayinanna Lahum fil Ardi Wala Wala Ajma'in. He says, since you have made me astray, I will beautify this world so that I will misguide the people altogether. This is what Shaitan is saying. That he will make this world very beautiful for us. He will make the money, the car, the, the luxurious life very beautiful and very dear to us. So that we will leave the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will commit sins only for this world again. And look what he's saying. He didn't call a Rabbi, oh my Rabb. He knows there is a Rabb. And I was looking at many of the verses in the Quran. Even in some verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when shaitan makes someone astray, then he says, I am free from this. I believe in the Lord of the Rabb. Subhanallah. Even there is a verse like this in the Quran. I forgot the reference. But it says over there that after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that after shaitan misleads, after shaitan makes someone disbelieve, then he says, I am free from this. I fear the Lord of the Alameen, Rabbul Alameen. I fear him. La ilaha illallah. Shaitan fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet you will see the Muslim these days who are arrogant. Yet you will see Muslims who call themselves Muslims, who say la ilaha illallah. Yet they do not fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. So we see over here that shaitan, he made the excuse. Then, oh Allah, you are the one who made me astray. Now, now Shaitan he did a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Fasajidu Adam, prostrate to Adam. Everyone prostrate illa Iblis, except Iblis. Allah. On the other hand, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he, he also did something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not do it. Now, what was the response of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam? Surah Al-An'am, uh, Surah al uh, sorry, Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 39. Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, <coughs> he says, over here, 723, sorry, sorry, it's verse number 23. In uh, chapter number 7, verse number 23, Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, he says, Qala Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Uh, anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakulanna min al khasirin he is also saying rabbana oh my rabb but what is he saying i have wronged myself zalamna anfusana i did wrong you did not now look at the difference over here <coughs> on one hand allah ordered shaitan this is a amr an order and this is the sharia try to understand this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him prostrate to Adam this is one part of the sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our Islamic law we have orders to this so Allah ordered him but he did not he committed a mistake but rather than asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness rather than saying oh Allah I'm sorry what are you saying you are the one who misguided me on the other hand as Adam alayhi salam Allah said to him, don't do it. This is nahi. So these are two things in the sharia of Islam. On the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if we have amr, do this, and we have nahi, do not do this. Either then amr can be uh, wajib, obligatory, sunnah, or mustahab, recommended. And that nahi can be haram and makruh. So these are only two things in our sharia. Do this and do not do this. So on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Hazrat Adam alayhi do not go near this tree. Wala taqrabu shajara. Do not go near this tree. But he went over there. Then, after doing this, what did he say? Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Oh Allah, I am the one who made the mistake. So forgive me, because if you not, I will be among the khasirin. And not only me, zalamna, me and my wife, we are the one who, who did this together. So this is the way of a Muslim person that when he commits a sin, he does not say that no, it is uh, Allah who made it. Rather, he says, I am the one who wronged myself. So, <coughs> now let us look over here at one very important point. 
What did Jahan bin Safwan 